Assalamu alaikum. This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org slash donate. As little as $10 a month can help people find life-changing guidance. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the choicest of blessings and salutations upon our Master Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We welcome back our listeners to this podcast series, The Masters and the Millennials, episode 15. Uh, Habib Zain bin Sumait, continuing during lessons from his amazing work, he, in the next chapter, he, in the following chapter, he speaks of uh, seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And this forms part of the broader chapter Where he'll be speaking about Matters related to Tawheed Habib Zain yeah, He spoke about seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Presenting the View of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah As Imam Nawawi Rahimahullah ta'ala And others stated That there is a consensus By the ulama By Ahl Sunnah that Allah, that Muslims, believers will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the afterlife. And also there is agreement by the scholars that it is possible for a, for a believer to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world. Even though the majority of them stated that uh, seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world was something that does not happen even though it's possible that it may happen, it does not happen, and it only happened for the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Without getting into any of the details of the aqidah of this matter, in terms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not existing in time, neither existing in space, and how is it possible for one to see that which does not exist in time and that which does not exist in space, Without getting into any of those technicalities, what I'd like to speak about um, with in relation to this topic is something that uh, Sheikh Aminullah Abdul Rauf once when visiting our institute Darul Tarath al Islami or Darul Safa in Cape Town, South Africa, he addressed our students and he spoke about realignment, uh, realigning ourselves and understanding where we are traveling to, where we are heading, what is our objective, what we should be striving for. And he made the point, if I remember his words correctly, he uh, quoted Imam Ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala as, as, a, as a source uh, for the fact that our objective and the ultimate aim in life is to reach that place in paradise where we will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ru'yatullah seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said that Imam Ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala indicating to this listed the seeing or the viewing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the very last chapter in his Ihya Ulum al-Din. Not only him but a number of other authors. Now it's important for us to understand this narration. We may not be speaking about challenges that we face directly in the West today, but understand this as a as a broad framework that wherever I find myself, whatever challenges I may be facing, whatever my circumstance, whatever my situation, I need to change, realign myself to tread a path that will allow me to be present with the people of Jannah in Jannah when the following happens. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala an he transmitted that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah will say to the people of Jannah O people of Jannah and the people will, res- will respond by saying Labbaik Rabbana wa Sa'daik wal khayr kulluhu fi yadaik and then Allah will ask the people of paradise Hal raditum are you pleased and they will respond saying to Allah, وَمَا لَنَا لَا نَرْضَى يَا رب. Why should we not be pleased, O oh Allah? وَقَدْ أَعْطَيْتَنَا مَا لَمْ تُعْتِ أَحَدًا مِّنْ خَلْكِكِ You have given us in Jannah, in Paradise, that which you did not give anyone of creation. This is the best treatment 
the greatest favors that you have given anyone ever. How can we not be pleased? And in our next podcast, inshallah ta'ala, Habib Zain will be speaking about a description of Jannah and a description of the fire. So we will be speaking about that luxury and comfort that uh, one will find in paradise. May Allah make you and I from the inhabitants of Jannah. Amin ya Rabbil Alam. So Allah will say, after they said, you have given us what we desired, Allah said, Ala u'tikum afdal min dhalika. Should I not give you better than that? More virtuous than that? Something greater than that? So they will respond, Ya Rabb, and what, is, what can be better than that which you have already given us? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yakshifu al-hijab, Allah will remove the veils. And the inhabitants of Jannah will see Allah. And there will be no pleasure. Nothing more sweet. You won't find, in nothing will one find more contentment. More happiness, more bliss, more fulfillment. Any greater experience when Allah removes His veil and we are able to see Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Allah that we've been praying to all our lives. The Allah that we worship. The Allah that created us. We will see Him. May Allah allow our eyes to be present on that day when we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator. And after we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will say that اليوم وحل عليكم ridwani that today I make it known to you that I am pleased with you. I place upon you my pleasure meaning I am pleased with you. فَلَا أَسْخَطْ عَلَيْكُمْ بَعْدَهُ أَبَدًا and I will never ever become angry with you again. This is the pinnacle in Jannah. This is the greatest event in Jannah. This is the highest form of reward that anyone can receive seeing his Lord Allah. And that is the Ru'yatullah that will happen in Jannah. The realignment that we are speaking about is that whatever I do in life should put me on a path that takes me to seeing Allah in Jannah. Seeing my Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah make that a reality for you and I. So seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in paradise, in Jannah, is something that scholars have agreed upon by consensus. There were some misguided groups within this ummah that held different views. Uh, however, we do not pay attention to those views. It's agreed upon by Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the majority of this ummah. And Imam Nawawi has quoted a consensus upon this consensus by all scholars whose views are to be considered, that we will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in paradise. The next thing is seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, the, in this world is possible. However, it only happened for the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How do we know it's possible? It's possible because Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, he asked Allah that Allah shows himself to Nabi Musa. And Nabi Musa is a prophet of Allah and he would know what is possible and what is not possible. And therefore the fact that he was able to request that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you and I that it is possible for someone to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, however, um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam further establishes that one could see Allah is the fact that the Prophet also did so. And Imam Nawawi again, when he spoke of the Prophet وسلم, seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said that the Prophet وسلم, first of all, he performed the Isra and the Mi'raj with his physical body, not just with his ruh. He traveled from Makkah al Mukarramah to Baytul Maqdis within a moment. And from there, he ascended into the heavens until he reached a point where Jibreel could no longer accompany, accompany him. And that's spoken we, mashallah, we are in the month of the Mawlid of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said to Jibreel, at such a place does a friend desert his friend? And Jibreel responded saying to him, Ya Rasulullah, if I was to go beyond this point, then I would burn lahtaraktu. Because we are now piercing the veils of Allah. We are reaching the nur of Allah. I may be Jibreel, I may, have a, I may be created from nur and light. But even my light will burn when I go beyond the veils of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, the nur of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was such that he was the only one able to continue traveling until he reached the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he saw Allah.
as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes reference to in the glorious Quran and our scholars from Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah they say that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Allah with the eyes of his head bi'aynay ra'si Naam, and that was in this world he saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fa'awha ila abdihi ma awha Allah revealed to him that which he revealed the scholars say Allah left that عام, general and vague not specifying what did Allah reveal to him and what did Allah give the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because there was much more he received much more than the five times daily prayers otherwise Allah would have said Allah revealed to him the five times daily prayers but Allah said ma'uha that which he did now another discussion and this is perhaps more relevant to all of us and that is uh, can one see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a dream and the carried view of Ahlul Sunnah al Jama'ah again is that it is possible for one to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a dream. And uh, often quoted in this regard is uh, Al Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah ta'ala who dreamt of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a dream, he saw light. And he asked Allah, Oh Allah, what is the best way for a slave to draw closer to you? What is the best way for a slave? To draw closer to you. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so sorry, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala responded to Imam Ahmad saying that the best way for a person to draw close to me is to recite my kalam, reading the book of Allah, the Quran. And that allows us to encourage ourselves and our brothers and sisters and all listeners and followers of the series that dedicate some time of your day to reading the book of Allah. And we have spoken about this in the past at length. And I do not want to repeat those discussions and those narrations. But here yeah, Allah is saying to Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, the best way a slave can draw close to Allah is by reading the book of Allah. And Imam Ahmad then asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabbi, is that reading the book of Allah with understanding, without understanding? And Allah responded, whether the person reads with understanding, without understanding, the best way for that person to gain closeness to me is by reading the book of Allah. And thus we find that Imam Habib Zain uh, raised this very important discussion of seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it a reality for you and I that we are from the people that will see him in Jannah. And beyond that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us from those who will see Allah in our dreams. How fortunate is the one that sees Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a dream. And this is something that happens to many of the believers in this earth. We have a student studying at our madrasa. Uh, he just started studying and within the first month or second month of his studies, he came to some of the teachers and told them that he had a dream wherein he saw and spoke with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make that a reality for you and I. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. So, uh, the advice again, as a reminder, how does this podcast, this episode tie into you and I um, facing, uh, how does it assist us in dealing with challenges that we are facing in the West? It helps us in telling us that we need to realign ourselves to that objective reaching and being from those people that will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in paradise. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.